you've obviously known each other a long time. How did you become friends, and when did you first play together? I think David, uh, well, let's see, David has the story, right? how we got together. Well, somebody offered me enough money to put together with the band that I wanted to play with. Yes, so um, this is the band that I asked to play with me, and it, it worked. Mm-hmm. You all seem to be very good friends and very tight as a band. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've known each other, I guess, uh, a long time. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess I've known Bruce longest, 15, yeah. 1965, yeah. something like that. But everybody else I met right away. I, actually, no, I knew, Roy, I, knew, I knew Roy from New York. Right before that, yeah. Before yeah. That. Maybe we can sum it up by saying the band has 200 years playing experience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. How does that make you feel when you say that? Odd <laughs> and old. <laughs> I'd like to add that it makes us feel odd and old. How's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that Alzheimer's coming? Greg, Greg I, lo- I loved the comment that you made to a reporter just as you were about to embark on the 2012 UK tour where you said, now I did have to edit this ever so slightly, we're all really old, we're playing kick-ass, historically important music, and chances are pretty good someone won't survive. Four manacle old lunatics crammed into a van full of equipment and cases of Depends. But the best part of this endeavour is that I'm finally the youngest guy in the band. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. It's true. (laughs) the great thing is, Trish, I'm wearing diapers again. <laughs> As I said, the, the, the best thing is I'm the youngest guy in the band, and I'm still wearing diapers. <laughs> <laughs> this is David. I'm the oldest one, but I'm the most immature. You're the most immature. That's normally what happens, David, when you get old. You, tr- uh, you, turn, uh, you turn into a recycled teenager. We would like to invite you to the, kin- to the gig that we're playing at the Green Hotel. Are, are you available to come to that? That's the one in Kinross. Yeah. Kinross is, is pretty far away, to be honest. Oh, okay, okay. I would love well, to come, but... Anyone that's we would love to meet you. I, I would love to come. I'll, I'll see what I can do. But the, the other alternative is that you come and play a gig in Danoon. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you maybe think of that for next year when you come back. And this is John, uh, the tour agent. And you get hold of me, and we'll find a gig in Dunoon, which we'd be happy to do. That would be wonderful. Where you... are you located? Dunoon is um, on the west coast of Scotland. Um, it's about an hour's drive and a 20-minute ferry journey from Glasgow. You know, we played Glasgow, David and I, with Country Joe Pans about eight years ago. And the support band, very nice guys, we were chatting, and I said, you know, do you understand me when I speak? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, I have some trouble understanding you guys. I mean, it's pretty Glaswegian, the talk. And they said, you think we're bad? You should listen to the guys from, I forget where, we can't understand them. (laughs) (laughs) Much like America, there's all different dialects, and um, yes, there are some Glaswegians that have very, very broad accents that even I can't understand, and I'm from Glasgow, originally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. That's, as we're right. Yes. <laughs> right. Now, back in 1967, the landmark 3D rock concert, the Monterey International Pop Music Festival, was held and featured the first major American appearances by Jimi Hendrix and The Who and the very first major public performance by Janis Joplin. Although your respective bands appeared there, am I right in saying only David and Roy played? No, Bruce was there. Greg was too little. Uh, I was was studying for finals in high school. Right. Greg was, yeah, Greg. I knew one of you was studying. Greg was studying. Played Monterey. What are your memories of that historic event and what artist or artists do you most remember from then? Well, I have this is David. Um, to me, it was the best gig I ever played up to that point. And ever since, I've never played a better gig. Uh, the musicians were treated like, uh, like human beings. <laughs> and uh, it was just fabulous to be 
you know, hanging, like Roy was talking about standing behind uh, Booker T and the MGs. It was, uh, it was like there were a whole lot of magical moments, small ones. Right, so would you say that's the highlight of your career so far? I think so. Well, that and playing with Pete Seeger. Actually, no, playing This Land is Your Land with Pete Seeger in the audience singing along with us. That probably is also a highlight. Do you think it was because it was organized by musicians? Absolutely. Absolutely. Even if they came from L.A. <laughs> and, and Lou Adler, who was not really a musician, who was also a musician. It was, uh, you know, there were so, it was such a... Uh, uh, mixed bag of music, yeah. very eclectic. I mean, you went from the afternoon with Ravi Shankar to, uh, you know, Otis, and uh, just a, it was a real wide range of music, and everybody listened to everything. There wasn't like the sectarian musical split that, mm -hmm. that, 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 yeah. that happened. I remember when I moved to London in '68 that I'd heard there was a recent concert by Chuck Berry and The Who, and there was fighting between The Who audience and the Chuck Berry audience. Really? It just <laughs> blew my mind. That, was, that didn't happen in Monterey. Monterey no, was Monterey was the opposite. A very magical moment. Plus, well, it's known as the Summer of Love, isn't it? Summer of Love. Summer yeah, of Love. Correct. <laughs> it must have been an amazing experience. In excess of 90,000 people there. Just all listening to your music. How amazing would that be? Well, there was there's a film. There was a, a theatrical release of Monterey Pop, and then there was there's also a, been a director's cut release of, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. secondary bands, I guess, and the bands that were on the top of the food chain, so to speak. And uh, that's out on continuum. It's a big. It's a box set. It's got everybody in it. It's really great. It's really great. Yeah. Actually, actually, what that is is three CD sets. The first CD is the movie. The second CD is Jimmy at Monterey and Ravi Shankar at Monterey. And the third CD is Outtakes. Right. We're a country Joan official on that. Blues Project is on it. They're not on the regular. But right. Right. Well, and I think the one magical thing about Monterey, the area there, is it's close, it's close to the southern coast. And uh, the weather went through changes during the whole course of the uh, mm -hmm. the whole show. So uh, this night, for example, that uh, Otis Redding and, and the Jefferson Airplane played. The Jefferson Air, the fog was rolling in. It was getting very cold. People had blankets around, them. and uh, the place really cooled down a little bit. Even though the Jefferson Airplane was a hot band, mm -hmm. uh, when Otis got out there and jumped into his set, it just, the place lit up, and uh, not that the fog went away, but the vibe certainly did light it up, and it went through kind of weather changes, it was like, a, it was really an organic event, yeah. really, and P, as David said, it was very peaceful, really, uh, and also, the cops were cool, yeah, that was <laughs> at the end, the cops had flowers on their hands, really, yeah. did they, they had the motorcycles, and all that, the, they, uh, the, the town was very cued, cued into the whole event. It wasn't like an adversarial deal between the town versus the promoters versus, you know, whatever code or rules, etc. It was pretty well done. Every crowd was very well behaved. Yeah. And there wasn't a lot of drinking. That was another thing. Was there not? I mean, there were a lot of other things, but there was like, I don't there was not no. much drinking at all. <laughs> so there were a lot of, you know, drunk people. Yeah, the interesting thing, thing is David uh, and I went back to a retro, uh, uh, a reunion, a 20 year after, I think it was, of the binary pop, and there was a seminar on stage, and a lot of people who were involved with it were there. And going back to the empty arena, walking in there as, as a kid, I guess it was, uh, to see it again was, was like looking like when you're a kid, you, you look at life. You're looking up at all the adults, and everybody, everything seems so big, so large. And, mm -hmm. uh, when we went back there as we grew up, that uh, it, it seemed very small. It was amazing. It was yeah. uh, 25 at the yeah. time, so. <laughs> and it was smaller. So, uh, and, and, and we'll end up <laughs> this is Greg again. Hi, Greg. And uh, to add to, to, to more of the Monterey serendipity, um, during the 40th reunion, of the Monterey Pop Festival, Roy and I played together in the uh, the reincarnation of the electric flag. 
the, the, the band that had Mike, Mike Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were on, on that same stage together. And uh, I, I had nothing to compare it to because I, I played there, but you know, I wasn't at the original, the original event. But all I could think of is standing on that stage all in that spot, how much great music had come off of that that place that I was standing, and it was just, it was an amazing... And if I might add an addendum to that, mm -hmm. uh, on that gig that Greg and I were playing, it was like, it's like Greg actually saved my life, and I, I won't go into any details right now. <laughs> 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 Is that not something you can share with us? We're going to tell the audience in Ken Ross. Right, uh, oh, so you have to right, so I have to come then <laughs> to hear the story. <laughs> it must have been an incredible experience. It merged as it was. I mean, I didn't have any particular expectation that it was going to be such a great thing. I flew in from the East Coast, and, and to me it was like watching the movie uh, by George Powell, When Worlds Collide. And uh, in that movie, uh, when everybody has to leave planet Earth, and they take this rocket ship to supposedly a safe planet, but they don't know if that planet is inhabitable by, by humans, if there's, there's oxygen on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what that was. I come from the East Coast to this semi-tropical forest and beautiful coast, and uh, we land, and it was like stepping off to the spaceship and uh, stepping into this lush, wonderful, breathable, beautiful place. Yeah. On array. Uh, Roy, Roy, you would like to more, some more pot? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I know, I know that's, that's, that's lightweight. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what are your memories of Jimi Hendrix? I have to ask that. And Janis Joplin. Did you did you actually meet them? Did you speak to them? Yes, sure. Janis, 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 the big brother and Country Joe and the Fish were kind of a lot together. Years. And Country Joe and Janis Joplin were uh, an item for about a minute. Really? A minute. Yeah, they used to fight all the time. So Janis said to him, uh, Joe, before we break up, why don't you write me a song that I can sing? Write, write me a song. <laughs> so he wrote the song Janis, and he presented it to Big Brother and the Holding Company, and they had no idea how to play it. So we did it. And, that's, uh, and actually... Uh, I still keep it in my in my solo repertoire, and uh, I played it at Janice's memorial. And uh, she was also a very nice, warm, down to earth, yeah. lovely person. And it yeah. was really a terrible shame, yeah. you know. Story of how Janice, you know, the old days she used to drink. She used to drink Southern Comfort, oh, yeah. which if you don't know it over here in England, yes, we do. We do know it. Yeah. So you, well, too bad for you. Anyway, <laughs> she, she drank that, and then they started to make some money. And uh, around the time that the Southern Comfort Company sent her a case for doing such, you know, promo work for them, she switched to cognac. Uh, so. Unlucky. <laughs> but yeah, very yeah, sad. Yeah. And Hendrix, I didn't know personally. I was in the same room with him a couple of times, and. He wasn't real friendly. This is David. I always liked Jimmy. We were, we were, he was always friendly to me, always nice yeah. to me. We used to, uh, when we, would, we toured with the uh, Jimmy Hendrix Experience, Prince Joe and the Fish, up after Monterey, we went like maybe a dozen gigs up and down the coast. And, and uh, I would go into, the dress, into their dressing room, hang out with them sometimes, and uh, play guitars with him. He was uh, a really uh, wonderful, wonderful guitar player. I, he, I asked him if he wanted to see my guitar, he, I, and I realized, no, he's left-handed, so he said, no, no, I can play it. And he started playing the most amazing blues stuff that I, I'd never heard him play before. And, and, uh... That's ambidextrous. So I, so, no, but he was playing it upside yeah. down. Yeah. Oh, I see. Upside down. I, right. that, yeah. he just, I said, how'd you learn that? And he said, well, when I was, uh, you know, when I was a kid, growing up having guitars, if I didn't bring the guitar to the party, I couldn't play I didn't play, I didn't get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he learned how to play upside down and backwards. I didn't know that. And you, he played with his teeth. Well, that, that's just, that's a trick. Is that, it? That, there's a bunch of, bunch of tricks that guitar players do, but they're just tricks. <laughs> You're letting uh, the cat out of the bag now. Yes, uh, secret. Well, we, all, we know, well, I have a few myself. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> and wonderful stories. Now, in 2012, you all decided to collaborate to celebrate the 45th anniversary of the landmark event, and you embarked on the first UK tour as the former members. You played 14 concerts in 14 days in England, Scotland, England, Scot- England, Scotland and Wales, and the reception that the band received was overwhelming. Whose idea was it to get together to celebrate the, the anniversary? John Roberts. Yeah, idea I, actually. Our tour manager booked well, it. Actually, actually, what happened was I I sent I I this is David. I sent John an email mentioning that I had played with his band, you know, and I didn't really expect anything. Well, I wasn't asking for anything. Just telling him what was going on with me. And uh, a couple of weeks later, he he wrote back to me. He said, "Well, I ran it by a couple of club owners, and they all won. Uh, they got so excited that I booked you right away." And of course, then I had to tell the guys. Well, how long had you been playing together as the former members up until then? But before that, yeah. Oh, about a, we had five gigs. Five gigs. The previous October. Fourteen concerts in fourteen days is is quite a lot. It's, it's uh, pretty pretty intense. Pretty intense. And you're doing it again this time. You're about to embark on the second tour. Um, and that actually starts tomorrow night, Thursday the 2nd of May. And I believe um, the first one is sold out. That's a private preview performance in downloaded in Mid Wales. That, that's right. We, we played there last uh, October. Right. And your CD, your album, The Former Members, is also out on release tomorrow. And I have to say it's superb. Thank you. Are there new tracks on the album? Where did the inspiration for the songs come from? They all have different histories. Yeah, the songs are uh, just, just, I guess, favourites of ours or representative of a particular thing. Yeah, so you've all contributed some songs to it and that it's all favourites of each of you. Yeah, this this band is... uh, this band is a democracy. We all, we 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 we're all. It's 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 our band. Do you have a particular favourite song on the album, or each of you have your own favourites? I like back home. Back home, yes, that's one of my favourites. But I like others too. But I do love Fly Like an Eagle. I think that is superb. When you're performing tomorrow night, are you going to be playing that? Oh yes, yes. We play that as an instrumental. Yeah. All that we, yeah, all the tunes on the record are, are records that we perform. He is waiting for us to do the record. Right. I'll, I'll say that this is Roy. We're, the, the music will evolve from even now as we're doing the, the new material. Things are changing as we play it, and uh, um, and we're adding new material, which we've added to this tour. So uh, it's it's uh, an enjoyable uh, excursion and adventure, I really, in, in musical adventure. So. Uh, I think folks who do make it out to the shows will be pleasantly surprised, if not love it, all the way. 